If you have played any racing game in the past few decades, it's very likely that at least one of these games has rewarded you with a prize car. Whether it's from winning a championship or just getting lucky, they are usually a way to make your car more exclusive and can allow you to try a car you would have otherwise never driven. The Gran Turismo series is certainly no exception to this, as it usually provides you with a plethora of prize cars by completing events and obtaining licenses. However, in Gran Turismo 4, the prize cars for each event will always be the same for everyone. This can now be changed thanks to the arrival of the Gran Turismo 4 Randomizer mod, which allows you to randomize the prize cars for each event based on the name that you fill in at the start of the game. And since this makes it possible to get any car from any event, it also opens the possibility to complete the entire game using only prize cars, which is exactly what I wanted to do. However, I did not expect my run to be as weird as it eventually turned out to be. So with this introduction out of the way, let's dive into my incredibly cursed Gran Turismo 4 randomizer price car only run. The very first thing I wanted to do in this run was to obtain all the license test rewards. Since Gran Turismo 4 gives a price car for getting all bronze, silver and gold medals for each license, there are already a maximum of 15 cars up for grabs here. So we went in and completed all gold rewards for every single license. The National B license was up first, which was completed without too many issues. And to make things even better, the cars we would obtain from this license were already quite good. Obtaining the RSC Rally car, which we now unfortunately cannot farm credits with, as well as an Evo and an Imprezza. We then carried on and did the National A license, in which we got all gold medals in only 30 minutes. Easy. My excitement then reached an all-time high when the bronze reward was a Toyota Supra Touring car. Oh, let's go! Let's go! <laughs> but then, we got this car. Number six, that's really get for gold. Come on, I know we're going. Yeah! <laughs> let's go! Okay, this challenge is over. GG. GG, this challenge is over. Guys, it's been a pleasure, it's over. Now, before we continue with the other licenses, it will be a good time to explain how we can actually complete this run. Outside of getting a car that's fast enough to complete the final event, that being the Gran Turismo World Championship, we have to complete all of the other events in both the beginner and professional league to even be able to access it. Most of these events place restrictions on what you can bring to them, like the type of car, its drivetrain or model year. To summarize, our garage must contain cars which cover all drivetrains and aspiration types, a compact car, a supercar, a car from 1970 or earlier, a convertible, a car with a boxer engine, a K car and a sports truck. The last five I just named in particular are some of the rarer ones. So it's already very good that we have received a Subaru Impreza this early into the playthrough. Make sure to keep the other 4 car types in mind as well, since they are the rarest cars and therefore the hardest ones to obtain. Another thing you want to keep your eye on is the car's versatility. Although the car types I've just mentioned are mandatory for completing the challenge, there are also plenty of other championships that we can complete outside of that. For example, a Subaru Impreza can be used in the Boxer Spirit and 4-wheel drive cups but can also be used in a variety of Japanese cups, and even has its own one-make championship. This therefore makes the car quite useful to us, as we will be able to obtain some additional cars from these events. So with that in mind, it probably doesn't come as a surprise that at this point, I was already incredibly happy with the 6 cars I have obtained so far. So when we had also obtained all of the gold times for the International B license, I could do nothing but laugh as my first reward was a Prius. A Prius, let's go! <laughs> a freaking Prius. Let's go. Luckily, the other two rewards were quite a bit better, as we had also received an Opel Speedster, a car that counts as a convertible, which, as I just mentioned, is one of the more important cars to obtain for this run. The last car was in 1980 Sylvia, which would also prove to be pretty versatile. Since we were only 2 hours into the playthrough at this point, I was confident that we would receive the gold rewards for all 5 licenses in a single stream. And it certainly looked like a reality once we had reached the final license test for the International A license in less than an hour. 
And then, all of a sudden, the game decided to remind me about what happened in my last challenge playthrough. It completely crashed and I, made, I broke the save state. I have to do the entire A license again. Oh no. Oh no. I have to do the entire A license again. I think. Yep, that's gonna be a whole reset of the A license. That's gonna be a whole reset. Bruh. Not only did the game get stuck on the loading screen, which later turned out to be an issue with the mod, I had also accidentally made a save state while it was stuck, therefore losing all of the progress I had made for the entire international A license. Did it stop me though? Oh, absolutely not. Yes, let's go, that's number one, come on. Come on, come on. Yes! Easy go. I can't pull very much head up this time. In just 40 minutes, we had reached the same point as last time, and unlike before, had actually made multiple save states as well as saving the game itself. We then quickly breezed past the final challenge in the R92 CP, after which we were able to collect the next three cars. An RX-7, a Nissan Cube, which is a compact car, and a Toyota Carina, which is probably the first redundant car we had received so far. At this point, I was a bit tired of having essentially done 5 licenses already, so it was time to do some of our first events. And what better car to start off with than with the Prius? It even features a bespoke HUD, and you never have to shift due to the transmission it has. So it was quite a unique and fun experience for the first few events. Although the first cars that we would receive from this were not very useful to us. On the next day, it was time to obtain that final S license. Although I have barely ever completed this license as it's not really necessary and would normally give you pretty mediocre rewards, the randomizer would allow us to potentially obtain much better rewards than usual. Despite my lack of knowledge, we have managed to complete this license in about 90 minutes. But just like the International A license, there is one good car and two which were not that useful to us. With all the license tests completed, it was time to head out and do some more racing. This is where we started to get a pretty good variety of cars, with most of them being sports cars and having at least some usability outside of the main events. My luck would then take yet another turn for the better as we had received a classic Toyota Celica from 1970, which would perfectly fit the requirements for the classic car championship as you need a car from 1970 or earlier. However, after a while, we would run into our first problem with this playthrough. Duplicates. Since the randomizer allows any event to have any car in the game regardless of what other events would give, there is a chance that some events will contain duplicates, something which we'll unfortunately see quite a bit more often in this run. I had also managed to obtain an AC Cobra and upgrade it into an absolute monster with over 700 horsepower while weighing just over a ton, which funnily enough counted as a compact car, so we could completely annihilate the compact car cup as well as completing the supercar festival. <laughs> we left AI again. <laughs> They were lapping at my four lap racing. Yep. At this point, we had completed almost all of the championships required to unlock the Gran Turismo World Championship. The only two for which we still needed a car were the lightweight K-Car Cup and the sports truck race. This, however, would prove to be no easy task. There are around 25 key cars and only 5 trucks in the game, or actually 7, since the mod allows the Dialto Midget pickups to be used in the event as well. This would therefore give us some pretty slim chances of getting either of these two, even having less than a 1% chance to get a truck as a prize car. This is why we started to do as many of the short events as possible, like the special condition races and one make cups. We had even built up an Audi RS4 to be a 650 horsepower rally monster, as well as a bunch of other cars to mess around with. But as the price car started to roll in, we still wouldn't see a single K car or sports truck. The worst part of this was the fact that I also couldn't really call myself unlucky, as we were getting a wide variety of sports cars and race cars. 
we would then breeze past the 25% completion milestone while having around 50 cars, and we would still have neither of the cars that we needed. We even did the mission races, in which mission 23 took more than an hour as I tried to figure out how to do it, while the AI was in constant disagreement with itself. Okay... This guy just... Uh, what? What? Eh? What are they doing? Mission 34 with the SLR McLaren luckily didn't take as long, but on NTSC, the car is so bouncy that some parts of the track are nearly impossible to navigate through. Despite all of our efforts, however, we would once again be getting a bunch of cars which were good, but not what we needed. This was also the point where I would slowly start to lose my sanity in this playthrough. <laughs> After completing most of the driving missions, we headed back to complete as many of the other events as possible, and once again, as the price car started to roll in, the disappointment was building. We now had received more than half of the game's unique price cars and had completed 50% of the game while still having neither a key car nor a sports truck. So, in order to not be stuck in this playthrough forever and lose my sanity in the process, I would continue until I had received 100 price cars, which is what we did on the next day, and we would technically get a car short enough to be used in the key car race, but would not be viable due to obvious reasons. <laughs> It had to happen. It had to happen. It finally happened. It's a K car. <laughs> it's technically a K car, but unfortunately it only has one horsepower. The last few cars were also nothing we could use, so this is where I decided to apply a different strategy, using cheat codes. A few months before making this video, some players had managed to find out that Gran Turismo 4 actually has a bunch of cheat codes, which unlock after a full year of in-game days have passed. These cheats then allow you to gain practically infinite money and get gold on any event or license test. My plan was to use the instant completion cheat to obtain the rewards for every single event that I could potentially do up to this point, to see if there was any possibility of me obtaining a K-car and a sport truck within the run we had so far. To start off, everyone on my stream wanted to see the endurance events first, to which I reluctantly agreed. Unsurprisingly, none of the shorter endurance races had anything we needed, with the irony reaching an all-time high as the Nürburgring 4-hour race gave a Formula Gran Turismo, something which you would normally get on the 24-hour variant of this race. And what would the 24-hour variant give? A Mercedes-Benz A-Class. Mercedes- <laughs> Okay, that's genuinely- that's genuinely meme-worthy right here. That's just genuinely meme-worthy. 24 hours of Nürburgring for an A-Class. <laughs> The two Le Mans endurance races gave us nothing we could use as well. Which is of course quite disappointing, but also a bit of a relief, as I now knew that I didn't have to do a long endurance race to get what we needed. We then checked every single other event, but none of them gave us anything useful, so I wanted to check if the game would hide the cars under the events they're actually needed for. So I had checked the K-car and sports truck events, and more of nothing. At this point, I was pretty convinced that there would be no trucks or K-cars available at all, until I had finally found one in an event that I didn't have the car for. I had also checked all of the extreme events, which would normally be inaccessible since you must complete the World Championship to unlock them. And to add insult to injury, this is where we had finally found a K-car. So with these two cars either being in a championship I don't have a car for or can't even access in the first place, there was nothing for me to do but to throw in the towel, as this had shown that this run was completely impossible. Or was it? Because there was one more price car opportunity left, the free lap battle missions. I had somehow forgotten to obtain the reward car for this, so this could at least give us some kind of consolation prize if it was a K-car or sports truck. But alas, after completing the final few races, all we would get is yet another letdown, which showed us that this run was truly impossible. 
Now, of course, my disappointment was quite immeasurable after completing more than half of the game to essentially find out that I could never complete this run. But was my day ruined as well? Actually, it wasn't. Because the randomizer mod gave me quite a lot of cards which I had never tried before. Like the Audi RS4 which we had turned into a very powerful rally monster, which proved to be a very good car for both dirt and snow events. I was also able to give the Prius a good try as an early game car, and found out that it's actually pretty good with the right setup. So even though this run would not be possible, it still shows that even in a game that's almost two decades old, you can still find plenty of new ways to enjoy it. And who knows, maybe I'll try it again later with a different seat to see if we can still get a completed price car only run. Or maybe there will be a completely different challenge run with this randomizer mod. That will have to be a story for another time. If you would like to see how this story unfolds, however, or if you want to have a sneak peek on what I'm working on next, you may want to watch me stream these games live on my Twitch channel. And if you have any suggestions about a future challenge run, whether it be for Gran Turismo 4 or any other game, let me know in the comments or on my Discord server. You can find the links for this and my Twitch channel in the description. The randomizer mod is also part of an upcoming overall for Gran Turismo 4, which is called the Spec 2 mod which significantly improves car sounds and adds a range of quality of life improvements, as well as adding a bunch of new events to the game. I'll add the links for this mod and all of the other improvements like the HUD overall, as well as any miscellaneous improvements, in the description as well. I also hope that you've enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, make sure to subscribe and like the video as well, or dislike if you didn't, of course. I would like to thank you for watching and for the incredible amount of support on my recent videos, and as always, have a great day. Oh, and I did it. Oh.